is Cooper. Hey Cooper, how are you? So this is our third time grooming Cooper. Um, his mom actually does an amazing job grooming Cooper. Oh, why is it? Let me see, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna see if maybe I can match mommy's uh, handiwork. But, um, and you know, the awesome thing is, uh, his mom was like, I actually, I brush before I wash, and you know, I, I, do, I follow your steps. So I'm like, wow, amazing. So, okay, what we're gonna do is, now the first time I groomed uh, Cooper here, uh, it was like, ah, you know, it was a little uh, more, I guess, exciting. It was more exciting than this. This is my third time with them, so, oh, people are saying hi. Uh, Nikki Hammond, hey, what's up, Nikki Hammond? And then, Crystal LaCroix, what is up? Uh, oh, there we go. Number 33 Aries, 330 Aries, what's up? Okay, so let me see if I can get a little closer here, or bring this table closer. There we go. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is go through because Yorkies, what you're gonna notice, especially now, um, that is kind of the end of the summertime, whenever we're going through these transitional periods in the seasons, you're gonna see a little bit of coat change. And his mom has been doing a wonderful, I am really impressed actually, she's been doing an amazing job keeping him well uh, brushed out, uh, thoroughly brushed out. See, he's kind of reactive, you know, he's kind of jumpy and reactive, but most Yorkies are. Most of these uh, little Yorkies, are kind of feisty, and when we understand why, why they were bred um, to go into these little alleyways and crevices, really tight, dark spots that, that would freak anybody else out, they go in there and they um, not only attack, but they take down like um, rodents that are bigger than they are, rats that are bigger than them, and they're just, they're, they have no fear. Uh, whenever they feel like they're being cornered by a bigger, more threatening animal, they go full on, <laughs> they don't back down. All right, so let me see here. Daisy, you like the flower? Hey, what's up, Daisy, you like the flower? Okay. Um, Llama Lady, first live stream, just found this channel. Wow, thank you, Llama Lady. Welcome, Nikki, Hyman, June. I'm thinking of getting a Cavalier. Do you think, do you groom any? And, oh, where did it go? How do I get the, okay. Do you groom any, if so? I would love to see a live stream. I, I did, I do actually, I still have one that I groom. Um, I had a client that has two of them, but we fired her <laughs> because uh, yeah, it was just, she just couldn't give me the time that I needed to actually go through and comb the dog out and comb all these dead hairs out. Because if you see here, it, it's hard to tell, maybe if I go closer, but right here, this hair here, watch this, oh, that was, that was nice. A little reaction, but um, these hairs here, it's okay, Cooper. You see how fuzzy it is? Like when you when you uh, brush the hair up, you kind of see how some of these hairs are really fuzzy, right? And so these, are, you're okay. These are the hairs that uh, need to come out. And see, because it's it's tight. See, oh, because it's packed in his skin there. So these hairs that are all dead and ready to come out, you're okay, Cooper. They're in there with all the other stuff that's inside those pores. And so the, this, the pores here can feel kind of tight, kind of uncomfortable for him. So as these hairs come out, he's going to feel less uncomfortable and he's going to react much less. So that's, the right, that's why even though he's acting like this, it's important to go through and get it out. Okay, buddy. I understand. See, right here. <laughs> and you. So, so every, every dog has different tolerance level. It's it, for pain, especially um, when they don't really um, have that kind of relationship with you. You know, he would probably be much more patient with his mom than with me. But I hear not. Not really. <laughs> not so much. But um, yeah, it also depends on who, who's uh, doing it as well. Uh, let's see here, Crystal Coy, they have no fear. Call that little dog syndrome, yeah, they have no fear. And they, they, were, they were actually bred, it was bred in them to do that. So when, if, I, if I keep kind of putting the pressure on him and I come across as like a bigger, more threatening animal, 
then he is not actually, he's not gonna back down and be submissive like a, you know, like maybe a yellow lab would, right? He is actually, or a cavalier, for example, a cavalier would just, oh, you know, and just be more, a little more submissive about it. Um, Yorkies, <laughs> Yorkies are little gangsters, man. They, they were bred to never back down, you know, especially if it looks like you're about to lose the fight, you know, then they go full out. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get a better angle here. So this is actually more important than the bath, getting the pores cleared out. And I can even feel it right here. It feels bumpy, the skin does. And it feels bumpy because inside of the skin, right? Oh, he's actually liking it now. Let me try to get his face there. He's actually enjoying it now because it feels good. It, it, it feels uncomfortable at first because the skin is already bumpy, it's already full and hurting and uncomfortable. So when I start to, when I start to pull at it, of course he's initially gonna be, ah, 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 stop that, you know? But as we start to get these hairs out, see that? As, as this, this fine, flimsy, brittle, dead hair starts to come out, let me just, let's see that, right? then it actually starts to feel better, see? And now I can start pulling at it the way I did earlier, and he's not reacting the same way. A little bit right there, but not as much, because even when I feel with my fingers, it's not as bumpy. So the reason why um, he's acting that way and saying like, stop, 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 that's actually the reason why I have to do it. <laughs> the reason why he doesn't want me to do it is the reason why I have to do it, because um, mm. it's, it's causing his skin not only to get feel uncomfortable and probably um, itchy and you know just sore because the, these the pores are so full, but also it causes it, it, it encourages uh, infection as well, bacterial infection and things like that. It just causes the skins to get yucky. Even with us, it's so easy for us to get blackheads, you know, and, and for us to get a little infection, a pimple, right? Um, just and we have you know we don't have that much going on inside our pores as they do. So it's much easier for them to get clogged pores and have it infected and turn into blackheads like ours. And it, and it feels uncomfortable, just like our, our, a pimple would feel uncomfortable on your face. So that's why he's acting that way. But that's why I have to clear it out for him so he, <laughs> he can feel some comfort. Let's see here. Oh, where the comments go? Oh, there. Uh, what do you do with very matted double coat dogs? Um, I, do, I just combed them out <laughs> for a long time. Uh, Shimika Meadows, you are the best. You oh no, thank you so much. Don't say that. <laughs> Daisy, like the flower. I would like to know too, llama lady. Oh, with double coated dogs, same thing. But I'm probably gonna use this, you know, to break up the mats first, section by section, and just work it. You know, one leg first, and then eventually you get the whole body. It takes about five hours, uh, honestly. Um, it takes about about two and a half hours to to get through the whole dog, and then about an hour to wash and, you know, dry, maybe an hour, hour, you know, about an hour to wash and dry, and then another like hour to finish, you know, brushing and do the little final touch-ups. So it's about a four or five hour job um, to get a matted, double-coated dog done, sometimes six, seven hours. You know, it just depends on the dog and how many breaks you need to give it. But that's the thing, it's like for anybody who thinks that grooming is like just a, just a checklist on your chore, you know, just a chore on your checklist, and you know, you should be able to get it done in 30 minutes, hour, you know, um, not the way I groom. <laughs> it's, a, it's an all day affair, you know, pack a lunch. Alrighty. So I'm gonna go through with this comb, right? And now this leg even is feeling much better. See how he's not even reacting much anymore to this leg? Because it's starting to feel, even if when I go the opposite way, it's not really catching anymore. There are still these dead hairs that I can hand strip out, but I'll get to that. First, I just wanna get as much as the bulk out as I, po as I possibly can. I hear ya. I hear ya, buddy. I know. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So, the, again, keeping with the understanding the breed, the last thing we want to do is turn this into a war because I will lose. <laughs> so, uh, whenever he comes back like that, right, and starts to like show me his teeth, I'm not gonna ah and back out and hey, no, I'm just gonna react as if 
yeah, I'm just like, uh, like a nurse would, you know, um, for a child. But I'm not going to react negatively or anything or turn it into a, a war. Let's see here. Um, a lot lady says, we adopted a dog about a year ago with his fur in the most possible, wor terrible state possible. 59 pounds of long, coarse fur. Oh. Long, coarse fur. And he literally, and had literal dreadlocks hanging everywhere. And, and had seen, and never seen a brush before. With a dog like that, honestly, I would probably just go ahead and shave it with like a number seven or number five, you know. The longest blade possible where I can get under the mats, but I would just shave that dog down and just start over. Because sounds like he's been through a whole lot. Last thing we wanna do is put him through a five, six hour ordeal like that. Um, we, can always, we can always put him through that later. Once he's acclimated to his new, new setting, new environment, um, especially because you just got him like that. So let's give him a pleasant experience. In my opinion, I would just go ahead and shave him down, get, you know, just take that coat off, all of that matted coat off, start over. And as the new hair starts to grow in, take better care of it brushing. And then, you know, I just, I, for me personally, a dog that just came in like that, who knows what they've been through out there. I just, I personally wouldn't want to put a dog through more than what they've already been through. It, it, you know, that's the thing. It's like use no way as the way. It's really just about the dogs, right? Doing what's best for them. Um, mm -hmm. Most of it is combed out by now, but there's still areas where we just can't get through. Yeah, maybe scissors or thinning shears, you know, like use some thinners, get under the mat and just go ahead and you know, chop it off. Obviously, it's not going to look good, but it's humanity over vanity. Always choose humanity over vanity. It's always great to have your dog look nice but it's much better for them to feel good rather than look good. Um, Deborah Lewis, I love watching you. And just in time, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let me go ahead and come out the rest of him. Thanks, I always feel so bad to have, to, to have him go through it. Yeah, and the thing is, um, just like Cesar Milan says, like we can never help a dog if we feel sorry for them. You know, just like, if we were working with a special needs child and you know, we can never help a child with special needs if we feel sorry for them, if we pity them um, and believe that they're below us, you know? And it's just, it just doesn't work out. So try not to feel sorry for your dog or any pity for them, you know? Feel happy that he's with you now, you know? And you're, you're doing what it takes to get him in better condition. You know, there's a lot to be grateful for. Alrighty, but I always try to catch my, because it is easy to feel sorry for the dog, but if we start to feel sorry for them, uh, we really can't help them. And that's true with people, with everything. Alrighty, so this side is pretty much good. <clears throat> and with him, we're gonna go short all over. Um, his mom actually does a pretty good job. <laughs> See that? See that? So that's this side that we haven't gotten yet. And that's why he's acting like that again. See, this side is fine because we got through it. Look at that, it's clear, it's smooth. This side, he's gonna, see? I hear you, buddy, I hear you. So, I don't wanna fight with him. I hear you, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, Cooper. I almost called him Coco. Sorry, Cooper. I love you. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Okay. All right, now let me get a little better angle here. Sorry, guys, I, have, I don't have a cameraman with me today. <laughs> uh, Nikki Hammond, humanity, yes, exactly. Humanity over vanity. Nikki Hammond, so. I, I, I always try to remind myself, uh, is this too much for the dog, you know? What, is it worth it, you know? I could get this haircut perfect, but is it worth it, you know? I always wanna do what's best for the dog. But also, I do have a very strong desire to keep my clients happy as well and give them the haircut that they want, you know? What else are they paying me for? <laughs> I hear you, Cooper. I hear you, buddy. I wish I can get a better angle here so you can see how he reacts and how I respond to it. <clears throat> so he, 
Let me see if I can get a good, a good spot here where he'll do it. <laughs> You're okay, buddy. Nope. So when he comes at my hands, I'm just gonna keep it there and actually let him bite my hands if he needs to. You're okay, buddy. See? See? See that? So it's just, it's not, it's, he's not even being real serious about it. It's just, you know, see that? <laughs> he's not really trying to bite me or hurt me. So I'm not, I'm not going to act as if I'm scared because that would let him know, oh, I think that you're going to try to hurt me. He's actually not trying to hurt me at all. He's actually just telling me. Yeah, exactly. Nikki Hammond, he's just vocal. He's just trying to let me know, hey, that, that, you know, that doesn't feel good. You know, hey, stop. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> so <clears throat> as long as we understand. Oh, you're OK, buddy. <laughs> you must fell off the table. As long, as long as we understand where it's coming from, then we can, we can be understanding, you know, and let him know, let him know like, hey, I understand, buddy. I understand you don't like that, you know? And that way, you see, he's, he feels heard. At least he feels heard, you know? And that's the thing. A lot of times, people don't really need you to do exactly what they ask for, you know? Um, they just want to they just want to know that they've been heard. They want to know that they, you know, their feelings are understood and they, you know, they feel like they matter. Same thing with the dogs. I feel like, you know, he may be thinking, I want to get off this table. I want you to stop doing that to my leg. Um, and I, you know, for me, I, I just want him to know by my actions, I understand that's how you feel and I appreciate that, but we have to <laughs> we have to do this, buddy, you know. Okay, you're okay. That's all right. Cooper. That's alright. That's all right. Now I I've, I've heard some people have told me don't say the dog's name when they're acting like that because you know it's like something positive. Um, they associate their name with something positive and you don't wanna give them any um, you know the misperception that you don't, want to, you don't want them to misunderstand and think that you, you think that it's okay by saying their name. But for me, uh, Cooper, it's all right. For me, I just feel like by saying their name, it lets him know, hey, I know you. You know, I know your name, buddy, you know? And I'm, I'm trying to um, let him know, I'm trying to comfort him, and, you know, help him feel more calm. So yeah, of course I'm gonna call his name, but I'm not gonna do it like, Cooper, 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 you know, like, yeah, Cooper, 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 eh, you know, not like that, just, hey, hey, Cooper, you're all right, you know, I hear you, you're all right, buddy, can I get a smile, you want to smile, he's smiling, <laughs> you want to smile, no, okay, not in the mood for a smile right now, <laughs> all righty, good boy, Cooper, <laughs> yeah, see that? As soon as we went to the inside of the leg, because the outside of the leg now is brushed, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. When I feel it with my fingers, even the, oh man, I'm constantly wiping these like fine little hairs off my nose. It makes me, anyway, it feels like they're crawling in my face. So the outside of the leg here is pretty well combed out now. There you go. It's just when I hit those spots that are still full and the comb still catches. That's the areas where he starts to react like that. You're okay. You're doing so good, Cooper. You're doing good. You're doing good, buddy. I know, I know. There we go. Good boy. Now that we can get the comb through. Now I see so much fuzzy hair that I could just kind of pull out, but <clears throat> I have to stop myself and just tell myself, you know, I'll get to that. Let's just finish the task at hand, which is getting this comb to go through the coat uh, smoothly. And see that? That's what it's pulling out. Look at that. <clears throat> and it actually feels smoother, looks shinier. You know, the color starts to look bolder because 
this stuff is, you know, coming out. So, you know, the beautiful dog is, is in there, you know, with those bright, beautiful, bold colors, those dark black, you know, and gold and brown. It's all there. It's just hard to see when there's uh, a lot of this dead fuzzy hair, this dull hair mixed in the coat, you know, with it. So that's why it's tough to see. But once we actually comb this out, and it doesn't wash out in the bath, not too easily. So by getting that out, you know, not only are we bringing out all the br brilliant colors of the live hairs, but the dog feels smoother, they feel more comfortable, less itchy, the skin is not bumpy anymore. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. Look how shiny and nice that is now. And he's not reacting that much, see? Good boy. Cooper, good boy. Look at that. Good boy. Okay. Any comments? Uh, Crystal LaCroix, are you just combing him or carding him? See, that's the thing. Carding simply means removing dead coat, so I am carding him by combing him. <laughs> so I'm carding him with the comb. Uh, but I could also card him, oh my goodness, <laughs> there we go. I could also use this Coat King, right, to card him. It's because this is a carding tool and it removes that dead hair, right? And the removes all the, you know, clears the pores, right? By removing this dead hair, along with the dead hair, all of that cellular dander, the skin dirt comes out with it, you know? So by doing that, I'm carding him, see, with this, with the coat cane, or the undercoat rake. Or I can card him with the comb. So carding is the activity, not the tool. So we can card with all different kinds of carding tools, and some of your best dematting tools are actually can double as one of your, you know, some of your best carding tools. So carding simply means removing the dead coat from the dog's skin. You know, the excess hair, things like that. So that's what carding means. So I'm actually carding his coat, yes, by, with the comb. I'm sorry, buddy, I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. <laughs> I didn't want to just yank it out. He got caught in his mustache there. You're okay. So <clears throat> the thing is, um, we want to respond to the dog, not react. Let the dog react, because that's what they do. They're dogs. They're going to react. We have to respond. The difference is, um, Zig Ziglar is what, who pointed this out, um, respond is positive. So when the doctor says your body is responding to the, to the medication, that means your body is um, you know, reacting positively to the medication. When you say your body's reacting to the medication, now that's bad. You know, it means your body has, is having an adverse reaction to with the medication. So let the dog react to what's happening, that's normal, but we respond. So the thing is, he moves super quick. Watch, when I, when I I'll try to comb his head and work on his head. See, look at, look at the way he, you know, so the thing is, for us, we want to respond to that, not ah, and move just as fast and react to him. No, we want to just center ourselves and let him move however he wants to move, however he feels like he needs to move. And we just kind of respond to it. See? And that way, there you go, buddy. That was the mat, that was the issue. But yeah, by responding to them, you know, they start to realize, okay, this person isn't really out to get me. You know, nothing really bad's happening. Even when I'm reacting, you know, he's, he's not really um, reacting with me, you know? What was that? Chat came in, oh. It's <clears throat> Crystal Corey. sorry it was hard to see on the other side of him. <laughs> um, Earth Angel, are you supposed to do that with carding? 
Are you supposed to do that carding with poodle as well? I do, I do, I, um, because poodles, they don't shed out, but they do have undercoat that does like need to be combed out and rotated to keep their coat clean. Um, so, in my opinion. So, I actually comb a lot when I do poodles and doodles. See, I need to work on his head. There you go. But he's gonna do, you know, like, <clears throat> kind of fuss. So it's kind of like Wing Chun, you know, like the <laughs> Kung Fu. There you go. So if he's gonna go like that, then I'm just gonna go like this, right? There we go. Oh, Earth Angel, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for watching. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe people are actually interested. Okay. <clears throat> Let me put this here. So I can... Oh, my goodness. Sorry, guys. Probably getting motion sickness or something. I just want to show how... Yeah, all right, buddy. Good boy, Cooper. <laughs> he moves so fast. There you go. Oh, you're okay. It's okay, buddy. Okay, let me get this out of the way. <clears throat> it makes you question his fear. Uh, kinda. I mean, he's just always kind of been like that. Um, and I know a lot of Yorkies that are like this. And... Just the other day, there was a groomer who posted a video of her doing a Yorkie that was acting very snappy, a little more snappy than this guy here. Um, and she got a lot of uh, negative comments and just people, you know, trashing her. Once one person even like was making fun of the way she looked. But anyways, like her, her face, anyways. So yeah, Yorkies. <laughs> oh, you're okay, buddy. It's okay, see? That's what we got, buddy. That's what we got for you, Cooper. There you go. <laughs> All right. You're okay. It's okay. See, so you just got to be patient. Don't, don't react to it. He's the one reacting to what I'm doing, right? And let them. Let them react. But we want to respond. You're okay. Oh, oh. He actually had a Xanax already. <laughs> His mom already gave a Xanax, but you know, I mean, Yorkies are, are ex very expressive. They're very bold, their personalities. I mean, think about it. This guy was bred, it's in his DNA to hunt down bigger, badder animals than him, you know, in these tight spaces that are dark, scary, but, Fearlessly, they just go in there and they just take care of business, right? And if, if a, the rodent kind of overpowers him, he's not going to, ah, and just give up. He, ah, you know, he's going to go all out. So when we understand that that's what they were bred for, you know, <laughs> kind of makes sense why they would ah, ah, not make it so easy for you. Um, I, I understand. Keep up the great work, Jim. Thank you, Shamika. Shamika Meadows. But yeah, um, it was... It was sad to see. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It was sad to see because this, this lady was obviously just trying to show that, you know, she's having a hard time with this Yorkie and people were just bashing her. And so anyways, I, I, feel, like, I feel like groomers, a lot of groomers, um, it's a really tough job. And I, I, I know, I hear about it a lot, how groomers get burned out. They go through depression. And I understand why. It's because sometimes we feel like we're being mean to the dog, especially you know, when he's crying ah, 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 and stuff. You know, you don't really feel great about that as, as a person, you know, that cares about dogs. You don't want to feel like a bully, you know, like, where's my lunch? Where's your lunch money? You know, give me your lunch money. <laughs> you want swirly. You know, we don't want to feel like bullies, you know, but then 
we go through all this and then people watching it from the outside say like, what a monster, what a meanie. Look at that guy beating up that dog. Look at, look at that lady being, you know, being so mean. Look at her face, you know? It's like, oh, come on guys, you know, we're doing our best. Nikki Ham, dogs are like kids. The owners don't want to think their own dog could ever act out. Well, uh, this owner knows. <laughs> and I even, I even asked her like, oh, can I, can, are you, is it okay if I stream? Because, you know, I don't want her to, you know, look bad or anything. But she was like, no, I, you know. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of my clients, I just don't stream or do Instagram and stuff anymore because, you know, I can tell that a lot of them don't really feel comfortable with it, you know, so I just don't. But anyways, you're okay. Oh, you're all right. So, so you want to be very careful when he's doing that because uh, this is very sharp and I don't want him to accidentally go up and down one time and accidentally get it. So I'm almost going to keep it faced away from his eye. See that? Away. So even if he jerks up and comes down on it, he's coming down on this end, not the sharp end. See that? So that's how we break that up. And now, there we go. Look at that. Good boy, Cooper. I'm so proud of you. Oh, Cooper. Mwah. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. So now that muzzle has got to feel much better. See all of that just combed out of that, the side of his face there? That must, it has to feel better. See now the comb doesn't stick anymore, doesn't get caught. He doesn't react anymore. See? So, I think uh, as long as we can make it clear to them what we're doing, why we're doing it, make our intentions clear to the dog, the dogs are usually super patient because they love humans naturally. I think, you know, one, one advantage that we have as groomers is that uh, these guys have been bred for centuries to love their people. So they love their humans. And so as long as I can present myself to him as you know, a decent human being, <laughs> then usually he doesn't want to hurt me. You know, deep down inside, he, he wants to actually work with me because it's bred in him for centuries to do so. Uh, let's see, Nikki, so good. Just shows how com uncomfortable Matt is. Exactly, if it's constantly pulling there, obviously when I go there, he's like, ah, you know, but once I get it out and he doesn't react, that shows me that we're, we're actually making a difference. Um, oh, Shamika says, oh, he's definitely warming up to you. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? And the thing is, <laughs> the reason why it's so amazing to me is because it's honest. It's on, the, the only way you can gain a dog's trust is honestly. You have to earn it. There's no way to bribe him. That's why I love this so much. It's real, something real, you know? Oh my goodness. Oh, good boy, all right. Uh, Shamika, I think he's just not in pain from the mats now. Not that June isn't cool. <laughs> exactly, but you know, exactly. Once the mats are out, you know, he's starting to feel more comfortable. You okay, you okay? Okay, so that's the same area, same thing there. We have those mats that he's not gonna really let me comb out. So again, we're gonna use these sharp serrated edges, right? But we're gonna make sure it's pointed away from the eyes. See that? See that? So even though he jerks and pulls back and even may, may come forward even, he's, still, he's, he's not in danger of poking his eye with this, right? So let's, so here we go. We'll try it again. We'll try it again. Remember this, buddy? You're okay. You're okay. It's all right, buddy. You're okay. See, even though I hold him and I hold his chin here, I don't, I don't like grasp it. If he really wants to pull it off, he can pull it off or get it out. So I like to give him the obvious way out. But I also like to let them know that we have to get this done. And if we don't, 
and it's just gonna take longer. See that, how it just pulled up? So sometimes I like to cover their eyes like that. <laughs> See that with my fingers, I have his eyes covered. So I like to cover their eyes sometimes just to kind of help. There you go. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, kind of like my, my daughters, <laughs> when we pull their teeth out or something, we pull the loose tooth. Sometimes it helps when they close their eyes, they don't see it. The anticipation. Anyways, let's see here. Uh, watch out, he almost two-pieced you, June. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I really, I, this is my third time with him, and I, I honestly don't feel any, any danger with him that he's going to actually bite me. If he does bite me, it would be completely accidental, in my opinion, or completely my fault. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Doesn't that feel much better? Oh my goodness. Look at that. And you can feel it too. When the comb catches like right here behind the ears, it's pulling these out. See that? Good boy. So <clears throat> I'm really trying to comb here, right? But since he's not letting me comb here directly, I'm gonna comb here where he is letting me comb, right? Not really, but yeah, so he's okay with right here. So I'm gonna comb where he's okay and then try to work my way around to where I really wanna be. <laughs> There you go. <clears throat> it's calm and assertive. Like Cesar Milan says, you don't want to just be assertive. And you don't want to just be calm either because you'll never get anything done. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you're too assertive and, you know, you're only assertive, then that can turn into a, a fight, a war. So we want to be calm and assertive, you know, and just find a good balance of both. So, you know, be persistent, of course because we have to get that area combed out. It's for his own good. He's gonna feel much better when it's, when it's done. But we don't wanna be too forceful either. You know, let him do what he feels like he needs to do. <laughs> One lady told me like, oh my God, dude, it looks like you're doing Kung Fu, <laughs> like Wing Chun. You know, and it, and it is a lot like that, you know, because you're just constantly trying to find, you know, the good, the right area. There we go. There we go. Oh. Okay. Okay, so I was trying to scrub them just to keep control over them. But sometimes, especially with Yorkies, see, as soon as he feels controlled, see, <laughs> as soon as he feels like I'm putting too much force on him, he's gonna, you know, do that. So you just gotta, just gotta try to just work with it. There we go. Good boy. Because here's the thing, <clears throat> if every groomer that he goes to just shaves him down, because they just, they had enough with this, they're done, um, and they just shave him down with the clippers. They're like, hey, it's, you know, it's not worth it, it's just too much trouble, it's too, taking too much time, let's just shave him down. We're, we're shaving him down, we're taking him short anyways. So they just shave him, you know, wash him, dry him fast. Then he's never actually gonna know how good it feels to have all of this combed out. He's never gonna know why we're actually trying to do this. So by me actually getting him through this a couple of times before, this is his third time now. 
Uh, first of all, it's not nearly the fight that it was the first time. You're okay, Cooper. You're all right, buddy. So it's not nearly the same fight it was the first time. The first time there was teeth involved, <laughs> you know. Now it's just more vocal, um, more just letting me know like, hey, I'm scared, I'm scared, you know. And it's okay, it's okay to be scared. Okay. So maybe what I'll do is try to hold, like put this harness around his shoulder here. That way I can kind of hold this, hold the harness in place, try to keep him somewhat in place here. So the reason why he, he's, he's uh, throwing so much of a fight here is because you see how this cone is catching. And now he's actually not fighting. Boom, see? Now he's like, oh, that actually feels nice. Look at that. He's like, oh, okay, that actually feels pretty good. <laughs> you know, so once, right here, see? Now that this is all out, look at how great that feels. Right, buddy? So now we're just gonna do the other side here. There you go, I know it hurts. See, even though it's, it's still uncomfortable, it's still probably feeling just as bad as it did on the other side, but since we got through one side now, and he's like, oh, it actually does feel better. Now he's a little more tolerant on this side, see? Good boy. You know, so it's like if we ever want to get to the point where he's just, you know, well behaved, he actually really enjoys the grooming process. If we ever want to get there, we have to be willing to cross this bridge, you know? We have to be willing to guide him there, not just force him there, you know? Because, uh, what is that saying? A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. <laughs> well, a dog convinced against their will, they're of the same opinion still as well. Um, so I don't want to convince him against his will. You know, look at that. Good boy, Cooper. Oh my goodness. What a good boy. Look at that. He's actually happy now. Nice. Nice. See that? The comb isn't catching anymore, and he's not reacting anymore. See that? Now I know causation doesn't always equal cor you know correlate. Uh, correlation doesn't always mean causation. I understand that, but isn't this a very interesting coincidence, right? The comb is not catching anymore. The skin feels smoother and less bumpy, and he's now not reacting. Uh huh. Look at that. Can grooming make that big of a difference in their behavior that quickly? Mmm. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's not some treat. It's not some clicker. It's not some shock or anything like that. It's just showing him why we're doing what we're doing and making it obvious to him that I'm just trying to help. Look at the change in behavior. Look at that. You know, can you buy this? Can you buy this anywhere? Is You can't, this is priceless. Okay, any comments? Uh, Llama lady, secretly he loves it. He's just too stubborn to admit it to you. <laughs> uh, you're not fighting, you're grappling. And man, he's got blocks. <laughs> He does, right? Oh my goodness, he's got some moves. But his kung fu is no match for mine. <laughs> my kung fu is too strong. I'm oh, just kidding. Anyways. Okay, so now that we got this comb to go all the way through his code, look at that, no reaction now, right? So now we know that we've done a good job, right? We can actually feel the difference and see the difference. Look at that. Good boy. All right. <clears throat> now, usually when I explain this to people, the first question I get is, yeah, but how long does that take? <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know how long this took. It, it takes as long as it takes, you know? Uh. 
There you go. You're all right. You're okay. Hey, hey, hey. It's all right, buddy. There you go. Good boy, Cooper. Good boy. No, you're all right. Okay. All righty. Let me move this back up. There we go. <coughs> now that we've got, and check this out. You know how I, I keep saying the skin dander, the skin dirt? Check that out, right? Let me see if I can maybe flip the camera. Get a better look at it. See that? You see those little white specks, like caked on there where the, at the base where the comb was? All these little, right where my fingertips are, these little white specks. That's like that skin, that's the skin dirt that I'm talking about, that we're trying to get out of the skin. And that comes along with the dead hairs. Uh, Nikki Han, my answer to that would be, when's the last time you did it? <laughs> yeah, but you know, I just, I just like to still let people know, you know, it takes as long as it needs to take. I don't, I don't really know how long it's gonna take. Wow, and that's, that's from such a tiny short haired dog, exactly. Oh, okay, so. Now, I'm just gonna go through really quick with this, just to get some of this out, you know? Like all of that, check that out. I can actually see it and feel it with my fingers, but look at that. Just, just with a few pulls. See all of that? So, even though we're clipping him short, if I were to clip him without pulling all of this out, you just pass gas right, by, right while I was talking. Anyways, um, but yeah, if I just left all of this in there, then after I shave him, he would be left to deal with all of the stubble and all of this stuff that's still inside his skin. And he would have to be itchy, uncomfortable, his skin would feel tight, you know? And as you saw how it caused him to react when I touched him here, do you think maybe that would have something to do with his jumpiness? Now in the bath, I am gonna, you know, <clears throat> be giving him a massage. And during the bath, while I'm lathering the, the shampoo in his coat and giving him a massage, you know, there's a, a few more of these hairs that are gonna come out in the bath, just because the water kind of helps with the friction and pulling it out. <clears throat> so more hair is gonna come out in the bath as I dry him after the bath, you know, and I'm brushing him while I'm drying them. Some more hair will come out. So the, 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 by the time I get to his haircut, you know, his skin will be clear enough to where, even if I do take him short, the color, see that? The color is still gonna be nice and bold, you know? And the skin is gonna feel nice and soft and silky. Well, the hair is gonna feel silky. <clears throat> Battery's low, I need to cook. Oh. Oh, can you explain how you first started dog grooming? I actually have a video of that on my, on my page. It's called How I Became a Dog Groomer. <laughs> um, Shamika, I would love for you to groom my baby Ava. Oh, wow, my daughter's name is Ava. Um, Nikki Ham, battery's low, I need to cook dinner. But bye for now, everyone. Keep up the good work, Cooper. And yes, yes, you too, June. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, Llama Lady says, bye, Nikki. Awesome. Okay. So, let me go ahead and finish uh, prepping him because I don't want to have another dog after this and I don't want to spend too much time. So I'm going to go ahead and finish prepping him and then wash him and maybe I'll stream again. As you finishing now, again, high notes, don't worry about it. You, you didn't miss a thing. Probably just some of the most helpful tips about Yorkie grooming I've ever shared in my entire life. I don't know, these ideas just started coming to me, but you didn't miss anything, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I used the same joke again, didn't I? I know it's, <laughs> anyways. Uh, Daisy, like the flower says, I'm back. Hi, hi Daisy. So um, I actually am gonna go ahead and finish uh, the stream because 
uh, I don't want to take too much time, you know, here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, finish getting all that stuff out of his skin, do the clothes shaving, his pads, Sani, give him a bath in that amazing tub there. I might even join him. <laughs> and then uh, dry him up and maybe I'll be able to stream um, for the haircut. So thank you guys so much. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. I'll see you guys later.